today's session is about finding short term trades all right using market profile and vsa now most of the things that you see in this particular uh, mind map uh, they will become second nature for you okay once you start implementing them it won't take you more than uh, you know a minute or two to understand what the market is trying to do at this particular moment and if you have this organization it will become much much easier for you to uh, kind of you know not forget something if uh, you know sometimes what happens is uh, uh, the market becomes volatile it gets too exciting and what we do is we forget an important step so you can put this on your desktop screen or print it out you know uh, and paste it on the wall in front of you so that uh, whenever you are trading uh, you can remember that okay this is the the sequence that we have to follow and once we follow this sequence uh, the chances of you know approaching the market correctly increases dramatically now i have always said that uh, once you start understanding the market better your trading also improves all right so so many people you know they just uh, straight away jump into finding the trades or finding the trade setups or you know copying from some trader now a days if you go on the youtube or you know google and you search options trading uh, you will get ready made strategies nothing wrong with that but the issue is if it is not implemented correctly it will you know and and if you miss some important steps in the meanwhile uh, it will completely take you in the wrong direction and then you won't realize what exactly is going wrong here okay uh, all right so this is my process of finding short term trades using market profile and vsa so let us start from step 1 that is at the top and then move down to step the the last step and then we will go on to the charts and try and find some examples for the same okay so then comes the time to develop a trade idea okay now uh, many people think that if i have understood the context uh, i can straight away trade no context needs confirmation okay once you have confirmed that your context is playing out then you have to develop a trade idea all right you have to develop a trade idea why developing a trade idea is essential very very simply unless and until you have a clear idea about what you are going to do in the markets how will you know when you are wrong okay let me give you an example okay so on the higher time frame you believe okay that there was a longer term resistance and uh, as as i said market trended higher traded sideways opened lower and you have this okay now the question is when you i mean this is the day you want to trade on this is previous day okay when you are analyzing this previous day you and and you have confirmation all right so you look at this day you look at this resistance and what do you see okay a lot of traders have taken the decision to book profits some of them may have sold looking at the resistance in short supply is coming in here make sense so this was a decision point decision has been taken lot of selling has happened next day opens lower it gives you confirmation okay initial confirmation ib range extension subsequent range extension more confirmation all right now you have to develop a trade idea what is your trade idea uh, this is the swing low all right so the c period has not fallen yet but as soon as this happens you have two ways you can trade either you can sell below the b period low like below this as soon as it goes below this you sell or you wait for a pullback and then sell make sense so till what point you should let the market pull back i use vwap for that all right so uh, all this will become clear on the charts but i'm just giving you an example so as soon as the market goes to vwap you should sell that is your plan it might or might not give you uh, an opportunity to do that so if you decide to sell the break down below the b period low it can come down a little and then pull back and in that case you will be in a lot of pain uh, and if you are waiting for a pull back and market straight away falls that will make 
you lose this opportunity so there is always a trade off so you may ask in is there, is there a way where we can uh, make sure that we never lose a trade or never go wrong no you will go wrong you will miss the trades that is a, a truth of life now 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 this trade you have missed okay this was a trade idea you had now you have missed what should you do now you are looking at a trade idea it it did not you wanted a pullback and it has straight away gone down now you come to the next reference okay so far you are tracking this yesterday's low opening below yesterday's low told you that okay there is a confirmation of sellers ibrex subsequent range extension gave you further confirmation now you are waiting for a pullback did not happen straight away market fell now instead of saying that yes i am very confident that the sellers are in total control no it has reached another reference so this was the decision point this again is a decision point and instead of jumping into a trade here or on any pullback you should now look at what decision traders take at this reference so your decision or your trade is again postponed you know into the future why because of this we have come to another decision point right so if you are long and this is your stop loss level obviously you have to exit and that is what i am monitoring okay let's say market continues to fall what it tells me is selling is strong but let's say it goes below this and recovers immediately then that tells me it was just a stop hunt so whoever had placed their stop losses here their stop loss were taken out and now the market may go back up now my decision making changes okay now my trade idea changes here my trade idea was to short but when this is happening i may not want to short i may want to buy makes sense because we are trying to trade short term we are not here to buy uh, you know itc as an investment no we are here to trade short term so you have to develop a trade idea okay once you have some confirmation you develop a trade idea and then you look at references which you are going to execute your trade at okay so we looked at references here we will look at them again but these references uh, will be action references these references where the references where you want to see what decision traders are taking but now you are looking at action references all right and they are mentioned here and we'll go to that in a minute all right what again you have to do is once you develop a trade idea and obviously like as i have always said that the time frame should be pre decided okay so when you come to the markets and you decide i want to be an intraday trader or i want to be a short swing trader this is the first decision you have to take what you want to do if you want to do intraday trader you have to do things completely differently if you want to be a short swing trader you have to do things completely differently process is same references will change your time frame higher time frame lower time frame will change all right uh, important reference zones will change action points will change so that is the reason why you need to first be very sure of the time frame so even though i have written it here select a time frame to trade uh, you have to be sure about that before hand okay now that you are developing a trade idea so in in this case you are trying to short and that was an intraday short all right okay then you monitor one higher time frame one lower time frame so again that come here so was the down move up move consolidation okay this is the uh, top of a bigger range market opens higher does this all right now we have a swing low here okay and you are an intraday trader and what i said you wa were waiting for a pullback but it straight away failed to this now you have to monitor one higher time frame now you know that there is a rough two day range you are an intraday trader as soon as you reach here the status quo time frame who wants to maintain this two day range is going to respond so even though there is weakness intraday the higher time frame is coming to uh, is is coming from the buy side why because it is expected behavior this is the swing low these guys are supposed to uh, you know come here and defend so your time frame is lower time frame you want to short but no higher time frame in this case has come in and they will support because this is a swing low there is a very high chance they will support if they don't then obviously you will get much more downside but still that is later in the day right now the expected behavior is they will support so 
you have a short position let's say you got the pullback or you sold below the b period low breakdown and market has given you nice move and it comes to this swing low and there is a chance that higher time frame might respond what you do you get out why because your time frame was intraday higher time frame is likely to buy here why would you continue to hold on to your position okay now you might say okay dean if we book our position here and then it again falls then what that is why part booking was invented all right this was the response of smart traders to this problem start with let's say even two lots book one here hold the rest of the uh, position with a stop loss at cost plus brokerage even all right so that is the simplest way to solve this problem all right so you do that you do that okay you monitor one higher time frame and you also monitor one lower time frame okay and i'll show you examples of lower time frame on the actual charts so you monitor these okay once you have a trade idea uh, once you have uh, you know selected a time frame you monitor one higher one lower time frame you look at action references so what are those action references that you will be looking at because that is where you are going to execute your trade first we were VSA signals are important. Some basic price action patterns can be useful to enter or exit a trade. Many people ask me, how do we enter a trade? Okay, do we enter a trade on VSA signal? Now I sometimes say very very mean things about <laughs> price action uh, because I don't believe in price uh, being the supreme thing. Uh, I believe volume is the supreme thing and not the vertical volume. Volume as in price into time. All right. that is the definition of volume that uh, market profile uses okay anyways so you can use any of these right uh, market opens weak this is the vwap pullback happens to vwap and you sell this is a very good sell simple where is your stop loss if it accepts above vwap that is your stop loss simple get out of your trade make sense so you have to look at some of these references if let's say uh, market comes lower and uh, you know uh, no, uh, there is a v wrap the market goes back up and as the market is kind of consolidating just below v wrap you see a lot of no demand towards the highs and no supply i'll show you examples on the charts this tells me that shorter time frame traders are active immediately selling this would be a bad idea because the higher time frame might want to test first and then sell so you wait patiently and when this test happens then you sell makes sense so that is why vsa signals can be invaluable then you look at some simple price action patterns okay you will say why should i complicate i see a flag developing if it breaks the flag i'll sell fine that also works all right as long as your uh, context confirmation trade idea everything is on point uh, even simple price action patterns work flawlessly right now once you are in a trade you have to monitor it just a while ago i showed you example your market is going lower but there is an important reference you are short somewhere here and you have to book some profits here because there is a possibility that some buying may come in especially if you are an option buyer then it is almost mandatory for you to uh, book some position here right so you monitor ongoing trade facilitation what is that one time framing range extension what do i mean by that simple so this was your a period b period extended range c period fell sharply and then if you get this next 3 4 periods are just moving sideways this is poor trade facilitation market is not doing a good job of going down someone is booking profits aggressively or someone may be coming in and buying because this is a important reference makes sense so range extensions have stopped one time framing is just uh, lower highs or higher lows so if the market is going down lower highs are forming that is one time framing if the market is going up and low higher lows are forming that is one time framing range extension you go beyond the range of previous 30 minute time period so here we are not going beyond previous 30 minute time period that is a warning sign all right and then you can still hold on to your position uh, maybe tighten the stop loss or whatever and because there is likelihood that we might break down or we might go back up if this happens your stop loss takes you out of the trade if this happens your stop loss has kept you in the trade uh, making you more money all right so you monitor ongoing trade facilitation then you look at risk management 
Now this obviously again like selecting your time frame to trade should be done beforehand. You should already know how many shares you are going to buy, how many lots you are going to buy. Alright. Uh, don't jump into the markets without knowing this. Uh, how much should you trade? Obviously, I mean, I have conducted a whole intensive on the topic. Uh, there are so many uh, great inputs, uh, you know, in the complete trading framework regarding that. Uh, so you can refer to that. Uh, and there are obviously YouTube videos also regarding some risk management principles. You can refer to that. So you have to decide first, uh, you know, beforehand, uh, how many shares are you going to trade? How many, uh, you know, lots you are going to trade? Uh, and this is very important. All right. Okay, then you come to your stop loss, right? Stop loss is essential. Stop loss is mandatory, but not the way in which uh, you know you are uh, taught so far. So many a times, you know, stop loss is the last thing that happens in your trade. Okay. So uh, what do I mean by that? Let's say the market is going higher. Again, the same example. Okay. Uh, you, you buy on this pullback. You put your initial stop here. Market goes to this previous high. You move your stop to. So that was the stop loss initially. Now your stop loss is here. Now the market comes down and your stop loss is hit and you got out of the trade. This is the last point of your trade. Okay. So your trade was initiated here and your trade ended here. For me, stop loss is something that should avoid catastrophic losses. What do you mean by that difficult word? Most of you know what it means. It means like a very big loss or a loss that will completely destroy your account. Okay, which usually happens with uh, short option trades on expiry day. If market rallies sharply, these guys are killed. All right. So we don't want catastrophic losses to affect our account, but smaller losses are allowed. Getting a couple of trades wrong is allowed. So stop loss is not there to help you get out of a trade. It is there to protect your account. There is a difference, right? So when this was happening, there is a pullback right market goes here and it is now exhausting and market has come back down this is expected behavior okay this exhaustion at previous swing high is expected how severe is it going to be you have to have a reference that will tell you that okay this is serious so it might be somewhere here okay this is let's say uh, let's take that swing low itself right so this is your swing low and this is your stop loss. If market goes below that, the whole premise of trading is negated. Now, does that mean you should not get out of your trade till it comes here? No. You see exhaustion here. You let the market come down. You know that there are stop losses of shorter term traders here. And market will run those stops. So you should not place your stop here. Let the market run it. And then see whether it goes back up or continues to accept here. Because if it continues to accept here, you are not going to wait for this. You will get out immediately. Make sense? But if it goes back up, you are saved in this position. Now you do not have to scratch this trade. Because the market is going back up, maybe this time it will break out. And you will get a good trade. Make sense? As soon as it kind of fails to go below this low, some aggressive traders might come in and add to their position. And then you see this happening, market is not uh, actually going back up, sustaining below this swing low. Yes, the next stop is this. So you should immediately get out of your position here. But if you get out in anticipation, you put a stop loss here, market hits this level, you're out of the trade and immediately market re starts, reverses and goes back up, uh, you will feel very, very bad. But let's say you took this position, you have a stop loss here. And then some urgent work comes in or if you are in a job and your boss calls you for a meeting or maybe, you know, whatever, you are, you are uh, dropping your kid to school with this open position and stop loss in place. And for some reason market falls sharply, you are out of your trade here. So you will make a loss. 
obviously much more uh, bigger loss than getting out at this point but it will not destroy your account and if this market reverses back up and you come back after doing your work and you find market trading somewhere here then you will thank yourself that your stop loss was here okay so stop losses should be at a level where the trade idea is invalidated okay that particular position that you have taken you should not get out of that uh, you know uh, so soon because many a times th that is the reason why traders don't make money is they get out of the trade because uh, they got out of their position the trade idea is still valid but now they are not in a position okay and then that that creates a lot of frustration so so don't do that don't do that okay uh, again uh, i mean i am uh, trying to give you as complete a picture as possible not always uh, possible to do it in a in a uh, short span okay so we have already like uh, ran through almost an hour okay now let us go to charts and let us uh, take example of bank nifty and let us you know go through the top down process so what you do first you look at the daily chart all right we are trying to trade this day so uh, do, just just imagine that this is not there okay if it was a live uh, you know market day it would have been great but anyways so okay what do we have we have some important references first is this swing low we have already tagged it here now we are coming back here okay there was a pullback and we have come back to that reference we have a swing high here so we are in a bigger range we have another big range below the markets all right and this was the breakout test of the breakout and continuation now we are back to that test level all right so now you need to ask yourself one question look at previous swing lows this one this one this one this one this one this one and this one all right now what is happening here most of the swing lows were never visited okay 1 2 3 4 this was visited not good this again is getting visited not good what it tells me is that buyers are not strong now as strong uh, as as they were earlier they are letting the market fall a little bit too much twice it has happened there is a likelihood we will come and test this why because now the buyers are not strong enough like uh, you know you see this move and then it defends but why is it letting the market come back to this swing low right here itself why it did not uh, push it back up these are the questions you need to ask so on the daily chart i see that there is some weakness all right this exact day might not give you that weakness but overall the the mood is weak all right that is the analysis that i have done on the higher time frame then i go to the profile chart okay and on the profile chart i will have to look at what is happening over the last few days all right so we are trying to trade this day and let us look at what has happened before that immediately i can see that yes there is a range there is a range all right so uh, as we go towards the top of the range supply comes in all right and as uh, you know you come to the bottom of the range you are seeing some demand coming in but over the last few days we are making approach towards the bottom of the range right now if we come to the bottom of the range what is the expected behavior buyer should come in and push the auction back up if it does not happen buyers cannot push the auction back up what it tells us is that buyers are not trying to defend this low the low of the range and in that case we might explore lower make sense so this is how you are going to track the markets all right Uh, let me show you a previous example where it broke below the range all right so again if i go here i can see that yes there is a range right uh, we moved higher but then we started moving sideways now how does this range look on the profile chart you see it's look it, it's looking like this and what is happening every time we come close to the bottom we get demand but here it spent a lot of time near the lows no immediate breakdown we again try to go higher but see how bad uh, you know was this attempt to move higher 
if you look at uh, short term uh, trade facilitation you can see there was no ib rex to the upside if market wants to go higher it should give you ib rex here there were some range extensions but the range was very very narrow right and then the range extension was to the downside and then on this day we give a clean break make sense so you have to look at higher time frame references then i hope you have decided what time frame you are going to trade on so in my case it is short swing time frame so i am now looking at this chart and i am also uh, trying to find an opportunity to get into a trade now this looks like an absorption of demand to me what it means we come to the low of the range and here buyers are not able to push the auction back up now if on monday it starts weak i might establish a sell position makes sense so this is how i am going to uh, you know slowly go towards developing a, a trade idea this is how i will look at context okay what was the context on higher time frame it is that you already have a swing low you already tested it once now market if this swing low was going to be protected market should have gone higher but it has not it has come back to that reference this is not good it means buyers are not really as active as they were early on so we might trade here for a while and then go back up or we might go down straight away so that is the higher time frame context on this 30 minute chart when i look at it i see okay there is a range and this looks like an absorption of demand but now the importance of one lower time frame or in this case you know there are three time frames one is the discovery time frame and then there is the status quo time frame and then there is the exhaustion time frame now the importance of exhaustion time frame comes in okay so we have a range the job of the status quo time frame is to maintain this range so they should come by here and push the auction back up job of the discovery time frame is to break this range so either to the upside or to the downside all right but exhaustion time frame they are just trading shorter term references so how are they trading they see market going below previous days low they are going to sell all the pullbacks okay so if you see the split view you see uh, market tries to go back up it comes to the days high and yesterday's point of control selling comes in pushes the market down these are shorter term traders they are selling right at yesterday's high okay now the question is they are selling right but what are they doing with their profits okay so some people have sold here they are booking profits here okay and as the market is going higher they are selling again now uh, if right the exhaustion time frame is in control this will keep happening every time market comes to the bottom of the range these guys will book profits every time it goes a little higher they will sell and this will create a narrow range makes sense like it has created here a narrow range and it can continue for a while now if in this case the discovery time frame which wants to break this range all right they have two options one all the demand that is coming in they absorb that and they sell into that they overpower the demand and they give a breakdown or they have a smarter way of doing this if they want to overpower the demand and this is the top of the range and this is the bottom of the range where are they selling they are selling at the bottom but we know smart money wants to do what buy low sell high now what they are doing selling low is it a good idea no so they have a better idea what they will do they will simply stop selling as soon as they stop selling what happens these shorter time frame traders who are booking profits their demand will push the market back up and at some point in time it will break out but now the smart money is observing the markets they are observing how far does this rally go does it go all the way to the top does it stop 50% half way all right what are the references doing say this is uh, that day is high does it go above that and fail back 
okay so this immediately tells us that shorter time frame is in control and they are just selling at the highs or if it goes back uh, you know goes above that sharply and then falls sharply what it tells us is that this is all shorter time frame their stop losses were taken out but there is no interest to the uh, in the markets to the higher side all right all this will give us information about what the market is trying to do and then you can use that information or the smart money will use that information to establish their trade so if they see okay higher prices are not bringing in new buying they will start selling and in that case they will be selling high at this level market may come down consolidate a little and then fall and this is the consolidation where they will sell so instead of selling at the lows they sell a little bit higher all the weak hands are out they are not once their stop loss is hit they do not have the guts to sell again so they wait and then as the market comes back down and it breaks below this reference this is where they will jump back again as a breakout trade so what the smart money has done they have meticulously taken out all the weak hands and used their buying or selling to their advantage all right so that is why you have to look at discovery time frame because they will do such things status quo time frame who will buy at the bottom sell at the top uh, without any uh, hesitation and the exhaustion time frame which can create you know sideways zones at the extremes uh, on account of uh, regular profit booking all right okay a lot of things lot of concepts all right so can get a little overwhelming i understand but uh, if if you focus on the markets this way you will eventually start getting you know uh, how to find good trading opportunities all right then uh, we go ahead we have uh, you know uh, we have to look at confirmation now now on this day all right uh, i had a example in my mind i think that is on nifty yes okay so let me give you example of confirmation see market is going down you feel the weakness then market develops an inside day and you see that sellers are exhausted then we try to go higher market develops a higher value area now you know that at least on the short term buyers are in control but the very next day forms an inside day so what it tells me is that although the value is higher although the buyer tried to take control they are now exhausted because they cannot even go above previous days high now whenever the market gets exhausted there is a chance that you will get inventory adjustment break makes sense so you get an inventory adjustment break and whenever you are falling because of exhaustion don't believe in that fall too much because it may not continue so what happens market falls and i am talking about this day august 9th so let us split that profile yes so why the trade facilitation is so crucial see what happens opens inside previous days range so on open at least you have no confirmation but immediately goes below the two day balance and that is a good signal ib range extension and then subsequent range extension also happens everything is telling you that markets are likely to go lower then what i said there are two ways you can handle this either you have sold the breakdown below b period low or you wait for a pullback to vwap makes sense so let us now go to the 5 minute chart and i'll show you how it looks there i think this is the day yes august 9th okay so see here market opens inside of the previous days range goes lower extends the range below b period low sharp fall quick fall happens and now either you could have sold here or now you are waiting for pull back to vwap now if you go back and you look at this this days uh, co trading workshop i have explicitly stated you know many people ask me questions uh, during the trading day like what to do and i told him that if vwap is taken out get out of your trade don't be in short trades lot of people had short trades they got out of you know their short trades when the market scaled vwap and see the follow through now why this is important because you need to avoid getting trapped into bad trades 
you are not losing money because you are taking uh, you know i mean you are not booking profits or uh, you know uh, you are not able to understand the markets no you lose money because you get trapped into bad trades so trading mistakes are what uh, are causing your poor trading results so when this was happening the trade facilitation after c period became very very bad and when it scaled the vwap the rise came into the market took out this stop losses took out this stop losses all right now again like if you are holding your long trades here the next day caused lot of pain for you because it did not continue higher or you entered late in the day why this point was difficult to trade was it was right at the top of the range all right so if i draw this range again for you you can see it was right at the top top of the two day range it was right there so status quo time frame wanted to sell and they will not look at structure or anything else they they see we are at the top they will sell they sold and market went lower so if you are holding longs you were punished and then we continue to move lever on this day there are some things but uh, on this day we came down make sense so blindly looking at price will cause a lot of trouble you have to look at trade facilitation you have to look at you know important references you have to look at different time frames and what what they do how they trade in the markets all right okay so this was a great short term trading opportunity you look at this you if even if you sold here it comes back to that level vwap you get out of your trade so you are prevented from carrying a loss making trade and as soon as it goes above the vwap now you know that this was just inventory adjustment break it was not going to continue and the original buying will come back into the markets and when it closes here you ask yourself again a question is it good to continue with this trade despite such a strong move where is it closing who are likely to come there with their short positions all right and will there be an opportunity to buy later like if you get out of this trade and again if it continues will there be an opportunity obviously there will be an opportunity because again market will open again there will be ipr range extension again there will be subsequent range extension again there will be pullbacks to vwap and all those will give you good trading opportunities but you have to be patient you cannot rush into these trades you have to be patient give it time and then you will be able to trade successfully make sense okay so vwap helped us get out of a bad trade and get into a good trade right so vsa signals how they are going to help yeah look at this this is a great example i think uh, let me show this example on bank nifty yes so we are talking about this august 10 expiry day see what happens here uh, i told you that if you are stuck in a sideways range and you have a lot of no demand and no supply uh, signals it tells you that shorter time frame are in control immediately selling this is a bad idea see what happens here you are stuck in a range it tests first and then falls tests again and then falls but when you are testing again you see lot of actual strong selling signals are there on the chart in this area it was not there but here it comes then you took a shot it would have given you nice profits all right so you need to understand when the market is in a consolidation there will be some sort of testing all right and once that testing is not finished you should not try to get into uh, you know these positions otherwise you will find yourself too early into a position and then maybe if market decides to do something different you will be trapped all right again you can see this whole area only no demand no uh, you know supply signals there was a test at the lows then market went a little higher again i mean you see uh, a few signals are there but look at these no demands and no supplies this is no supply no demand no demand all right they are clustered and that is what resulted in this wild volatility maybe some event was there i am not really sure but uh, should have been some event that caused uh, that sharp move all right and again once you get into sideways zone 
again you can see these no demands and no supplies clustering and then you will wait for a test right now here the test was successful and market reverse test successful market reverse here the test was it test happened went back up never was able to scale the vwap so fell back again so if you want to take intraday trades these are important points all right okay now how would you sell this that is an important issue how do you sell this and how do you uh, you know buy this so there is something called as uh, you know uh, change of color i just uh, uh, read about this or i think i watched a video of uh, it's an intraday trader so what he talks about is change of color so here you can see we are continuously going down the red color as soon as it changes you buy above the high you might get a good trade but you should not always buy when the just color changes you have to have the context so here the context was sideways consolidation this was a test uh, there was uh, no new supply as soon as the color change you could have taken an intraday trade this is a very wide volatility i don't think there was any trade here uh, but again you see we are consolidating makes sense and uh, you know some buying comes in here market goes higher uh, there was no consistent down move here but you have three bars going up getting resisted at the vwap as soon as the color changes you can short now this many people what they try to do is they try to create a system a very strict set of rules whenever they are talking about intraday trades all right so this should not happen that should happen and it should look exactly like that uh, it won't work that way you need to understand if you are trading intraday you are taking short term trading opportunities market will give you whip saws market will make you take some bad trading decisions and it will also reward you with some good ones all right so you have to be prepared to lose on some of the trades some money into the markets because if you are not ready for that then uh, you know you won't be able to uh, trade successfully for a long period of time all right so you have to be uh, you know willing to lose some money but on balance we have to make profits and for that the context is very very crucial because if you do not focus on context and you end up taking position just because of the setups like i told you the color change all right uh, or uh, there is something called as second entry third entry so market goes higher comes back down this is the first time we have broken a swing low don't take that trade if it does it again take this trade it higher chances of working all right so but the question is all right the question is if i just isolate this setup and try to repeat it everywhere will it work no but if the context is correct and the confirmations are there and the market development is supporting trade facilitation is happening and then you go on and apply these principles you will make uh, profits uh, very very quickly all right so that is the reason why vsa signals also don't work all the time because you have to have the context you have to have the support of the higher time frames you have to look at the uh, exhaustion time frames are they creating some issues is there a possibility of inventory adjustment right and once you do that then uh, applying these simple uh, entry and exit techniques will work all right okay so <clears throat> we talked about uh, the whole process you know how many steps are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 steps almost and i showed you uh, multiple examples of that 